Okay, Chris. How's it going, Shannon? Everything's good? We're good to go. Thank you. And Sarah, are you good? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> and our media is here. Good afternoon, everyone. We are talking today about a vulnerable population that is experiencing unique challenges during the COVID-19 crisis, the LGBTQ community. Joining us today, Sheena Barnes, Executive Director from Equality Toledo, along with Nick Comives, Toledo City Council member, and Elijah Jones, Manager of Treatment Services at the Mental Health and Recovery Services Board of Lucas County. We will hear from all of them, but first we are going to start with Toledo Lucas County Health Commissioner, Dr. Eric Jasinski today. And Eric, you are starting off. Uh, we have some additional businesses that are able to open today on the, under the governor's new orders. Yes, well, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it, and, and thank and you. I'm sorry. Before we get started, we'll ask our other guests to please turn their cameras off as you're um, speaking, Eric. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. And, and again, um, it, it is a uh, it, it is great to have uh, the panelists here today from the LGBTQ community. <laughs> Uh, we really appreciate them coming on and and, and talking about the, this vulnerable population and, and really getting the, uh, the the discussion going about what they need to do and what they should be doing. And, and again, thank you very much for for coming on today. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Uh, some businesses are reopening today, and that that's a good thing. So manufacturing, distribution, and some offices are able to open up. Uh, there's some new guidelines out there, so we all need to make sure that we keep each other safe. Though I think that's that's the big thing. Um, we're going to talk about this. We'll probably talk about this multiple times uh, today and over the next couple of weeks. But all those things we've talked about before are really important as we're opening up. It is not, we cannot take our eye off the ball right now. We really have to make sure that we're going to go beyond uh, what we were doing before to make sure that each one of our safe. Again, wearing those, those, those face masks, uh, again, washing our hands and things of that nature. But we'll, we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, you know, again, it was a great weather weekend. Uh, it was uh, it was seventy some degrees, and I, I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. But uh, we kind of ran ran into an issue, at least from what I saw. There are a lot of people out and about and not adhering to that social distancing. Uh, I, I know that you know it, it's nice out, and, and we were going to want to be able to do some things that we used to. But I would just caution us, please. Just let's let's wait a little bit longer to to really start getting back to maybe the way we used to do things. We still need to make sure that we're social distancing, uh, that stay at home order is still in effect at the end of, uh, of the month. And, and so we really should only be going out for essentials. And if we are going out uh, again as a family unit, uh, if we need to go inside for something, one person goes in, don't take the entire family. I saw, I saw that as well too. Um, some, some, some things I really wanna to stress today. Uh, face coverings. Uh, again, face coverings are going to be extremely important. The idea here, again, is that I'm really, I'm really not trying to protect myself from other people. I'm trying to protect myself from for other people. So what's happening is that I want to make sure that I, I'm catching anything that comes out of my nose, my mouth, so it doesn't get to somebody else. Again, these things are really, really important. Um, what's what if we don't? If we're not doing these things. If we're not taking that proactive approach. What's going to happen? We're going to be right back to where we are today in, in, in having to close things down. And we just, we just can't afford that in so many different, different realms. We need to make sure that um, we, we are consistent, that we continue to make sure that we do the things we need to do to protect each other and our community so that we're not back here in a couple of weeks if we start seeing high infection rates and or increased fatalities. Um, I do believe too that um, was there a graphic here today that we might be able to talk a little bit more about um, some concepts or no? I don't think so, Eric. Right. All right. Um, Chris, that's all I have on that point. It is on, it is on the health department website. Thank, now. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is up. And that, that graphic's going to talk about really hygiene, uh, what we should be doing about cleaning door handles and things of that nature, wearing a face covering. So again, please go to the health department website. For that information as well as a, a lot more that you could be doing much like the plan uh, that we have uh, that we, we've been able to help produce over the last couple of weeks about how to reopen uh, things you should be looking at uh, both as a business sense but also as that public health health aspect so chris uh 
Yeah, we want to remind people that that guideline, it's a wonderful resource. It's a, a booklet on how to reopen under COVID-19 and the new guidelines. And that's on both the Toledo Lucas County Health Department website and on the Toledo Regional Chamber of Commerce website. You can access that there. Wonderful resource for businesses as they're reopening and wondering what their responsibilities are under this new um, under these new guidelines. Eric, uh, something that was also disturbing though, over the weekend, you saw an uptick in overdose cases. And I know you wanted to address that as well here today. Yes, you, you know, um, the pandemic has caused a, a lot of issues and I'm sure that this, this uh, concern of overdoses is, is stemming from that as well too. Uh, again, uh, mental health concerns and frustrations and things of that nature, you know, do lead into behaviors that, you know, cause us some, some concern, especially in public health. And, Overdose is a huge concern for us. Uh, I just want to make sure that the community remember, remembers that we do have naloxone uh, here at the department if you so need it. Uh, please, by appointment, uh, it would be really nice. To, that helps my staff out to make sure they're protected. We do offer some walk-ins uh, that, that is available, but please, if you can, make an appointment with us to uh, go ahead and get, get the naloxone that you would need for you and or your family members. Uh, it is important. Uh, you know, public health has not stopped uh, just because pandemic. The pandemic has arisen, so there are so many things out there that you know we need to address. And un unfortunately, uh, overdoses and opiate use is still out there. Um, please remember uh, to to give us a call uh, if you need the naloxone. And Eric, just to clarify, is the health department open now? You are taking appointments from people. Yes, um, you know, the majority of programs are up and running. Uh, STD, uh, we're, we're, still, we're still looking at how to make sure that that is functioning uh, in a larger capacity uh, by keeping our, uh, both our customers and our employees safe. So more to come on that. Um, you know, Shots with Pass are the same way. We're, we're accepting individuals to come in by appointment. So as we as we go through this process that each one of us has to at our businesses to make sure that again we're implementing things that are going to allow us to keep our employees safe as well as the customers we'll be able to expand uh, services uh, to what they probably once they once were but again that's going to take us a little bit of time okay Eric thanks so much and please stand by if you would uh, I know that we will have some questions from our media for you after the news briefing is over. We wanna bring Sheena Barnes into our conversation now. She is the Executive Director of Equality Toledo. So Sheena, you are seeing some unique challenges that have been facing our LGBTQ community during this time. Let's talk about some of those challenges, especially uh, as they relate to our young people right now. Oh yes, unfortunately, uh, some of those challenges have been there before. But with COVID-19 happening, it only increased uh, for especially our LGBTQ plus youth. Um, we have a high youth homeless population here in Lucas County, um, and it's higher for our LGBTQ youth. Um, they are more at risk for, um, you know, living in unsafe uh, housing because no support. Uh, so using negative coping, such as, you know, alcohol or drug usage. And um, with the isolation of not having family support or your peer support, um, this is only increasing uh, those risks, unfortunately, for those youth. What are some of the things, Sheena, that you are hearing from your constituency, from this population about uh, some of those types of issues? Um, you, you know, that, that I think a lot of us who would consider ourselves allies might not even think to ourselves that, you know, being in under a stay at home order might be something that would particularly put somebody uh, in a bad situation right now. Well, yeah, like, uh, so 77%, according to the HRC uh, stats for 2018, uh, overheard a guardian or a parent saying something negative about LGBT, you know, folks. And so that only uh, can impact the mental, you know, uh, health of a youth. If they're seeing negative comments from their parent and guardians, how can they feel supported? Um, also, you know, we don't have a lot of spaces um, that operates to encourage LGBTQ 
but plus Q youth to be themselves. So even this even growing isolation um, while doing quarantine. Um, so we're trying to look at different virtual sites that are safe and that are welcoming for our youth. And during this time, you've also seen an uptick in the homelessness issue facing this population, correct? Yes, um, unfortunately, um, among our homeless, homelessness youth, LGBT youth are at higher risk because they're not uh, supported or welcome for their sexual identity or orientation. So a lot of our youth um, do uh, actually uh, get put out the house, you know, um, and have nowhere to go. And currently, if you are 18 years of age, we don't have any shelters that accommodate LGBT folks. Um, we do have a, a shelter that accommodates trans uh, folks if you are a domestic violence survivor, but there's no welcoming space for the youth. We have a safety net um, that I heard is actually uh, at its capacity because of the need. Okay, so we do have some resources we're going to share with uh, everyone at the end of this news conference, but I want to bring Nick Comives into the conversation too right now. Uh, he is a Toledo Council member, Toledo City Council member, and Nick, it's not just young people though, uh, adults and especially our senior population is also particularly vulnerable right now, um, especially with maybe underlying health conditions during this time. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's uncommon for any of us at this point during the stay-at-home order to feel isolated, but um, if you're an adult uh, member of the LGBT community, um, you know, not uh, unlike how Sheena described it for youth, feeling isolated even among your family, um, there are many LGBT folks who are my age in our 30s and on up who still um, feel isolated from most of society, and this time might be particularly difficult for them. Um, we also know that um, health risks and disparities exist at large rates for LGBT folks. So uh, this means that there are uh, additional barriers to accessing health care that exists for LGBT people, perhaps because of a, a negative experience while uh, seeking health care, health treatment, um, maybe visiting a doctor or something of that nature that um, really kind of uh, changed the way that they view seeking help. Um, uh, and then in, additionally, um, there are higher rates of um, smoking uh, within the LGBT community. Um, sometimes we find higher rates of HIV and AIDS or other um, uh, abusing drugs or alcohol that are a result of traumatic experiences that many LGBT people have faced. So uh, during this time, it's important to reach out to your friends and family members that might identify as LGBT and check on them. Um, but I definitely want to put some emphasis on our elderly population that are LGBT. Um, right now, we know that they are at the largest risk of um, uh, health crises uh, as a result of COVID-19. And that also means that many elderly folks um, need a little bit more access to our senior centers or maybe some food programs that exist, um, various other shelters or other programs uh, that help to support their lives while during the stay at home order. And for many LGBT people, um, they might be hesitant to seek that help um, for fear of discrimination because they've lived most of their lives um, feeling like an outsider or being discriminated against. So um, we just want to take a moment to reiterate that Toledo is a welcoming and inclusive city um, and that, um, you know, we know that our area office on aging is, uh, that runs a lot of the senior centers and a lot of the programs that I just mentioned um, are inclusive for LGBT people. And we wanna make sure that um, our elderly LGBT folks um, are seeking the necessary help that they need. And I would like to kind of specially say to them that if they aren't, they feel they're not receiving it, they could certainly contact my office through city council or um, Equality Toledo with Sheena, and we can make sure that we can connect them to um, whatever services they might need so we can make sure that they're getting food or getting the health care that they need. Um, because we don't want people to uh, suffer um, at higher rates just because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. 
Right, and Nick, you know, you you mentioned there about um, them being afraid or not comfortable seeking medical attention even at this time. So, what are you telling people who get in contact with you about that particular um, thing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that um, above all else, taking care of ourselves is um, uh, the most prudent thing that we can do, um, and I think that it's really. Um, important for people to uh, perhaps reach out to another friend um, to get a suggestion for somewhere where they can go where they know that the healthcare provider is going to be friendly um, to them. Um, I know that Equality Toledo has been working on a resource guide for some time to identify some doctors in the area and healthcare providers in the area that are friendly to LGBT folks. So um, there are ways to discover uh, you know, and break down these barriers that exist to seeking healthcare. Um, but, you know, uh, I think, you know, the more that folks like yourself, and thank you so much to you and to the um, Toledo Lucas County Health Department um, for being great allies to the LGBT community uh, to make sure that um, something like COVID 19 isn't going to. Um, you know, completely decimate our elderly population or just any uh, LGBT person um, who might feel like they um, don't have a place to go to during this time. And, and I just think that it's important for all of us to continue to educate ourselves and to recognize our shared humanity um, during this time in particular. Yeah, you definitely raised some points that I had not even thought of before that um, as well, Nick. So I know a lot of folks out there do have loved ones, friends, and family members who might be part of this community. And maybe you're, it's just not top of mind for you to think about some of these special challenges that people are facing during this time. I want to bring in uh, Elijah Jones now, uh, if we can, from um, the... Uh, Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Um, and Elijah, you know, we, we just heard that very disturbing piece of information from Eric a little earlier about overdoses being on the uptick. You definitely see a lot of struggle right now with members uh, of the LGBTQ community, and they, they are suffering in ways that other people are not. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'd like, um, I think it's important to recognize that May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month and that during this, during this time of crisis, there are things that are kind of common experiences that we all might be experiencing, such as increased anxiety, fear, and stress because of this pandemic. But historically, um, members of the LGBTQ population have experienced these and at a higher, higher rates of um, mental health concerns compared to their cis, uh, straight counterpart in society. So this, the impact of social, social isolation is seen more in the LGBTQ community because um, these individuals might be in environments that don't support their identity, don't affirm their gender, maybe um, not even just support, I would say even some more as be um, challenge their identity and um, cause additional stress because of that. So when we see the impact of social isolation, these individuals aren't able to go and be in the community, be around people who are affirming, who are accepting, who are loving. And they're they're almost they almost end up really alone in their own experiences with limited social support, which we know is extremely important to mental health. So these not only that, but we do see um, increases in such as drug and alcohol use as a as a way to cope with this. So I think it's uh, you know, the health commissioner said something very important that public health has, hasn't has stopped because of this pandemic. Mental health issues have not stopped because of that, this pandemic. Well, pandemic. What we're seeing now is really just an exasperated um, situation because of the pandemic. So people have had mental health issues. They continue to have mental health issues. And people who may have been on the cusp and barely barely surviving 
are might be um, experiencing more sig uh, significant issues because of this pandemic. So Elijah, what are what do you suggest? I know, and we're going to give some resources, some phone numbers that people can call, and uh, there have been expanded areas of um, mental health treatment right now. People can do it online um, in an expanded way, so that is really an important resource. But what do you tell those people? What are some of the things they can do right now to make sure that they are feeling that support and getting what they need? Um, during this time of isolation? Yeah, that's a really great question. So uh, providers have all moved and have expanded telehealth options. People can um, get the support they need um, just by phone or by, by video. Um, we, the Mental Health and Recovery Services Board has a you know great network, network of providers who are able to see people there are things you can do that are really great just self-help, um, self-care techniques that are really important to anybody's mental health. So maintaining a daily schedule, making sure you're getting um, proper nutrition, keeping a good sleep schedule. I know that I'll, some people might be unemployed and might think, you know, that our, you know, staying up late at night, sleeping in is fine, um, but really, sleep really impacts our mental health. So keeping that that schedule, that appropriate sleep schedule and staying hydrated are really great things to help with mental health. And I'd say that um, to reach out to people, we'll have those resources later, but to um, reach out and make those connections and keep those connections, connections virtually, whether you do it by phone, um, by FaceTime, or some other app you have, just to make sure that you are keeping connected with people and don't sit back and wait for someone to reach out to you. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with that, may feel like they're taking people's time, um, that some people really don't wanna to talk to them, but really uh, make an attempt to reach out to other people is really important during this time and stay connected with people you love and trust and respect. And um, a, a lot of people have a lot more time on their hands right now to be able to do that. So uh, to not hesitate to be able to reach out to somebody like that. Elijah, thank you so much. And we're going to give you some resources now that you all can access if you are going through some of these issues and challenges that we've just talked about. Um, we have a variety of organizations in our community who are able to help you in a variety of ways. So we'll start with, uh, well, we'll start with this. Affirmations uh, is a, an organization out of um, Ferndale, Michigan, up near Detroit, but they have a, a helpline that is very, um, uh, accessible for people, 248-398-7105. You see the Trevor Project information there also, their hotline 1-866-488-7386. And you can see those websites there. And again, we will put these on the Facebook uh, page in the comments section so you can access them later. Locally, let's go back, Sarah, if we can, to the Area Office on Aging and um, United Way. United Way 211 has a variety of services available to people, including um, where you can find food. Uh, they can also help direct you to shelter if necessary. And the Area Office on Aging as well can make sure that you, um, especially for our senior population out there, connect you with people that are able to help you in a variety of ways. All you have to do is reach out and call or go online and let them know that you need that help. We wanna give you the information for Equality Toledo as well. And that number is 419-407-6225. Or you can email info at equalitytoledo.org or just go online to equalitytoledo.org and they will be able to um, help you there. There are a variety of services online as well. And there are some very important phone numbers right now to give you from the Mental Health and Recovery Services Board um, as well. And that is um, first and, and foremost that COVID-19 emotional support, people of all ages and uh, means are 
going through stress right now and you are able to access that line. It was especially set up for issues that might be facing you um, during this time of isolation and staying at home, 419-442-0580. The crisis hotline, if you find yourself in a crisis situation and you really need uh, help, uh, we don't want you hurting yourself, 419-255-3125. Um, supporting Local Heroes there is our phone number for folks who are working on the front line, and that is a program um, that is offering free mental help and mental support to um, our frontline workers right now during this time. And then the ZEP Center is a great resource as well for a lot of things, but during this time they are um, also really focusing on addiction and helping people get through that uh, during this time. And that phone number is 419-841-7701. So a lot of resources, we will put them in the comments section there. We do have a couple of questions coming in from Facebook. I'm going to let, um, first Sheena, I will ask you to uh, please pop on. And somebody is asking if Equality Toledo offers a food pantry. And if so, do you have to be 18 to access it? So yes, we uh, have a food pantry here, Equality Toledo uh, Community Pantry. Um, we service everyone, we turn no one away. Um, and thanks to the community donation side, we are able to help those individuals that are not 18 with proper identification um, to receive services as well. We're open Tuesdays, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Saturdays, 1 to 4 p.m. All our information is on our Facebook page as well as our website. Okay, and I'll have you stay up and I will ask Eric to also come on because there may be some additional information. Um, someone is asking if Narcan and Naloxone are available free through Equality Toledo. Um, and uh, Eric, maybe you can pitch in on this through the health department side. So, Sheena, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I have a great relationship with the health department, and they have we have been talking about getting all staff and volunteers trained on Narcan. Um, I have a kid in my car. Uh, once again, we know the risks, uh, unfortunately, for some of the LGBT folks that we see with isolation and things going on, and that increases the drug usage. So we do have one on, on site. Um, we're willing to get more once hopefully the training can, you know, go over Zoom and things of that nature. Thanks, Sheena. Yeah, and we, we do have it here too at the, uh, at the health department. So. Okay, thank you both. Okay, from our media now, I see that Amy Steigerwald has her hand raised. Amy, please go ahead and ask your question and let us know who you are asking a question of, please. Hi, um, this is for, I believe, probably Eric. Um, I'm wondering, you talked about the uptick in overdoses from over the weekend. Do you have any numbers that can compare how many exactly um, our local first responders responded to? Um, because obviously this is a pretty big issue. Yeah, I, I don't have that at, the, uh, at my fingertips. I do know that uh, both us and Columbus had similar issues over the weekend. Uh, so it just was not us uh, relatively overdosed. I'll see if I can't get you some of those breakdowns uh, for, uh, to be able to report back out to you. Okay, thank you. Sure. Do we have any other questions from our media members? Or from our Facebook audience? Happy to take them. I don't see any other hands coming up. We want to let everyone know that we are also going to be holding a town hall on this issue. As you can see here, it's called Staying Connected, LGBTQ Resources Beyond COVID-19. It is next Monday, May 11th at 6 p.m. Uh, Elijah, Sheena, and Nick will all be part of that. And there will be a couple of additional uh, resources available during that uh, forum as well. So please mark your calendars for that. Um, it'll be a great time for people to be able to talk about the issues that uh, they are facing and the challenges that they're facing during this time of COVID-19. So mark your calendars again, May 11th. 
Any other questions from our media? And I don't see any additional Facebook questions coming in. All right. Thank you very much. That concludes our, if I could have our panelists just uh, put their cameras back on very quickly. Want to thank our health commissioner, Eric Jasinski, Sheena Barnes from Equality Toledo, Nick Comives from Toledo City Council, and Elijah Jones from our Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Thank you for being here today and doing this. Also, thanks to Desiree and David for doing our um, American Sign Language translation today. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris. See you guys.